Greetings, conservatives. This is your humble host, John Moraga, and we are back with more Conservacast. We look forward to keeping you informed with the latest and most relevant commentary of conservative issues. So without further ado, here are a few topics I'd like to discuss. I am livid. I am very angry. Now, I don't want to be a negative person, and and typically I'm not a pessimistic person. But today, I am just very beside myself. I'm very, (laughs) I'm at a loss for word, which is really rare for somebody like me. But today, I'm angry. Why am I angry, you may ask? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. The Supreme Court has just infringed heavily on our religious freedoms. Now, some of you may say, oh, well, what's new? They've done that before. Look at the history, blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. Today, there is an article. Well, the article didn't come out today. But today I'm angry because there was recently an article that came out saying that the Supreme Court agreed with lower courts in restricting church attendance. Now, this story may get lost in all of the rioting that's going on and protests that are going on and the COVID thing that's going on and and, and so many other things that are going on, all of this noise. Now, granted, it's important stuff, but among all of these other important things, I think this is probably one of the most important news stories in recent history. Now, you may say this is hyperbole. You may say I'm exaggerating this, but check this out. Let me read you in part the article, and you tell me, well, you can't really tell me, but I I think you might agree with what I'm uh, talking about here. So this is from the Associated Press, and it came out, uh, I believe, Saturday, this past Saturday on the 29th. The title is Supreme Court Rejects Challenge to Limits on Church Services. Let me actually read you the article and the details of that. A divided Supreme Court on Friday, the 28th, rejected an emergency appeal by a California church that challenged state limits on attendance at worship services that have been imposed to contain the spread of the coronavirus. Okay, maybe it sounds okay as far as protection and trying to be helpful. I get there's an ongoing controversy right now about how much caution we should have, etc. But let me tell you as I move on uh, why this is important. Over the dissent of the four more conservative justices, Chief Justice John Roberts joined the court's four liberals in turning away a request from the South Bay United Pentecostal Church in Chula Vista, California, in the San Diego area. The church argued that limits on how many people can attend their services, violate constitutional guarantees of religious freedom, and had been seeking an order in time for services on Sunday, which was technically today. The church said it has crowds of over 200 to 300 people for its services. Continuing on, Roberts wrote in his brief, Roberts wrote in brief, in his brief opinion, that the restriction, now check this out. This is where it's getting very dicey. Restriction allowing churches to open, to reopen at 25% of their capacity with no more than 100 worshipers at a time, quote, appears consistent, end quote, with the First Amendment. No way. No way. Roberts said similar or more severe limits apply to concerts, movies, and sporting events, quote, where large groups of people gather in close proximity for extended periods of time, end quote. Now, I'm going to stop right there. I'll come back to it. This is, it, it's, biz- I, <laughs> oh, I, I'm just, I feel my blood boiling. He's supposed to be an attorney. The, the, the smarts that it takes to be an attorney are at one level. He's supposed to be a judge. Again, meeting certain criteria to be a judge, to be smart enough, intelligent enough, discerning enough. Not only is he a judge, he serves on a federal court. He serves on a federal court. He's a Supreme Court justice. Not only is he Supreme Court, he is the chief 
Justice of the United States of America on the United States Supreme Court. It is beside, I, 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 I'm, <laughs> he's making a completely false analogy here and comparison. The actual freedoms in the First Amendment are specific to these types of things. Freedom of assembly, freedom of religion, freedom of, 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 of speech. Movies, business encounters have nothing to do, okay, you can make a small argument, they might have some things to do with free speech, but the, the layers of protections in the First Amendment for churchgoers far ex, out, uh, exceed any protections for moviegoers, for, what did it say here, uh, sporting events. When the Constitution was written, there were no formal sporting events in existence that mass people went to or community uh, gathered at. There were no movie theaters. This, this is just, uh, how he can make this comparison is just ridiculous. I'll go on. Justice Brett Kavanaugh, who is considered to be more conservative, well, that's another argument for another time, but in comparison, at least, to Justice Roberts, Justice Brett Kavanaugh wrote in dissent, now check this out, that the restriction, quote, discriminates against places of worship and in favor of, com of comparable secular businesses. Such discrimination violates the First Amendment. End quote. Amen, Justice Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh pointed to, to supermarkets, restaurants, hair salons, cannabis dispensaries, and other businesses that are not subject to the same restrictions. Now, folks, we, I, I feel like I'm living in the twilight zone. I'll just end with this. Lower courts in California have previously turned down the church's requests. I'm going to pick up there and keep going back. The lower courts had turned down the request to override these restrictions. So it was taken up. It was challenged. It was appealed. It went to the Supreme Court. The, the system that it went through the progress that it went through is reinforcing these infringements on our religious freedoms. Because you could say, oh yeah, well, the Ninth Circuit uh, uh, Court of Appeals, the Ninth Circus, as some have called it, you know, it, it's kind of notorious for being out there in fringe. A lot of, if not most of the majority of the rulings that they have are overturned by the Supreme Court anyway because they're just so kooky and out there. But this is one of the rare times that it's been upheld. Their kookiness has been solidified by the Supreme Court, five to four, mind you. But Roger Roberts, Justice Roberts, Chief Justice Roberts, agreed with the libs in the Supreme Court on this ruling. Now, there's two, well, three big main things. And I'll just, the first one is how it could even be reasonable for a conservative or even moderate justice to say that this that these restrictions are consistent with the first amendment quote consistent it's ridiculous so i'll leave that aside i've already <laughs> i've already hammered that home that's you know apparent the second thing though that i want to address is roberts discernment or judgment or persuasion, political persuasion, or deference, whatever term you want to apply to what he uses to make decisions. How reliable will he be if there is another similar case that addresses things like overturning Roe v. Wade, or overturning certain other types of cases, or just new cases that have to have, a, a, a whether it's a small split, such as in a 5-4 split, to help conservative cases move forward. How reliable is Roberts going to be? Probably not. That's very concerning. Now, this goes back. He has a history of this. He was the deciding judge. If I recall, it was another 5-4, to four, addressing the Obamacare decision when Obama was in office. And it went to the Supreme Court to decide whether or not the uh, the the individual mandate was considered a tax or a a, a another uh, unconstitutional fee on the American people, and he decided in favor of Obamacare. 
So he, he already has a history of this, but this is just raising the alarms. I think it should be raising the alarms that he is going to probably do this again, as he's demonstrated in this most recent case. So that's the second thing. The last thing is, forget Roberts. 10, 20, 30 years down the road, or longer. This case sets what in legal terms is called precedent. Now, for those of you who are familiar with Conservatives Corner, you know that one of our pillars is called biblical precedent. Because the actual term is referring to something that lays the groundwork, a, a legal standard that courts can reflect on and use as a basis to make other decisions. To say, well, the precedent is, the, the law of the land is, the, 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 the status quo is, whatever phrase you want to put in there, what's already been established is X, Y, and Z. So therefore, we can do A, B, and C. So another case that comes up before the Supreme Court may go even further Maybe there's no coronavirus present. A generation from now, there's no coronavirus present. But maybe some other reason that the state has decided to restrict the number of people going to church or services or worship comes up in his challenge. Well, if we look at this case that just was uh, that, that the Supreme Court just looked at, this is now going to set the precedent for what we will decide later. Now, to be clear, it says that they rejected an emergency appeal by a California church that sets that challenge state limits on attendance. Now, the actual case law for this may not be solidified in any type of this is the exact Supreme Court's decision on things. But the mere fact that this wasn't taken up is something that can definitely be referred to. The fact that this was rejected outright because the Chief Justice thought it was consistent with the First Amendment is something that later courts, other generations, can look back on and say, well, they did this back in 2020 based on these circumstances, so let's just say that it is a, 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 the, the, the precedent for how we'll move forward with these other non-similar cases, but there's already some type of history of that. Does this rise to the level of the precedent of Roe v. Wade? I wouldn't go that far. But it's definitely not something to dismiss. It's definitely not something that just is, oh, well, it just passed by the, the, the television screen or the internet screen or your, your inbox or whatever it is. I want people to focus on this. Folks, we are in the midst of a lot of chaos right now. The coronavirus, the protests that are going on, I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. The, 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 <laughs> there is a lot of noise. There is a lot of distraction out there. And I want conservatives to be motivated, to stay focused, to, you know, by nature, I think, obviously I'm biased, but I think by nature, conservatives tend to be a little bit more informed. Well, far more informed, a bit more objective, a bit more discerning, a bit more in tune with the reality of things, that we're, we're not so impulsive, but we don't just buy into uh, what a, a charismatic person or news channel might say. Even with news channels that we agree with, even if you agree with me, I'm sure most of you or a lot of you would say, well, maybe I disagree here or there. We try to, to be as, as open-minded yet serious about what we understand or about what we take in as far as news and information. So I want to encourage that. All the more right now, in the midst of what is a lot of noise and background uh, 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 static and, and fake news, whatever you want to call it, I don't want this story to get lost in all that. I might talk about it more. I might write an article about it. I don't know. Right now, I'm just trying to wrap my head around how this could happen and how little attention this may get. I, as I said, I, I, I could just go on and on about this, and I can't. I'm going to stop. Leading into one of those distractions. I, don't, I haven't talked a lot about the coronavirus. I've mentioned it once or twice in a, a previous podcast or uh, a conservative cast or so. But 
there's way uh, more information out there that I want to focus on. Uh, one of those being, especially right now, and I don't even want, want to focus so much on this, but the, the protests that are going on. Now, I have complete sympathy for, for the, the murder that took place. I, 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 I'm glad that the officer was charged. And I think a lot of people, a lot of reasonable people think that was way excessive force. I don't think there are many people who would say this person deserved what happened to him. So by no means am I dismissing what actually happened. I, I applaud the investigation going on to the police officer and other officers perhaps that may be involved, but at least the one in particular uh, is being charged with murder. I believe it's third degree murder. But subsequent to that, the reaction that's happened. Now, I'm old enough to remember when uh, Rodney King was beaten and there was a whole uproar and there were riots in Los Angeles. I'm from Southern California, so I remember firsthand. I, would, I, used to, I grew up in the suburbs, so it, it didn't really quite reach as far as to where I had lived, but it was getting pretty close into the sense of, oh, well, that's at least one or two uh, you know, little towns uh, over that uh, once it gets maybe one or two more, we're, we should probably start locking our doors or getting you know whatever other security measures ready. So I'm old enough to remember when. Uh, now it's been decades; makes me feel old. But uh, when that happened, when so now that there are these protests going on, it's understandable that there can be an emotional response, that there can be a perception of lack of justice, that there can be these 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 uh, organized protests and demonstrations for what's going on. But to the level that it's risen, to the fact that it's gone outside of where it happened, to other cities in the United States aren't even related. It gives the impression that it's not just organic. It really has the stench of paid, organized protests, whether it's Antifa or other types of, of other organizations that are just professional protesters, rioters, disturbers. And I say, I'm comfortable saying that because now... You could maybe see an argument if it was just in the United States. Okay, there's a, a perception of, a, of an overall justice system that has gone awry. I don't agree with that. I think that's, that's really uh, too broad of a brush to paint. Are there corrupt cops? Yes. Are there corrupt things that need to be fixed? Yes. But not to paint a broad brush. But here's where it gets really fishy, is that it's now spread internationally. Toronto, London, and, and places in Germany – what in the world do these places have to do with causing any type of effect or change or reformation of the justice system in this country? Now, as I said, you can make some type of argument that at least in this country, if, there's, if it's a different state, okay, well, maybe uh, causing some type of a disturbance in California might cause the federal justice department, the United States uh, federal Just justice department to look into things a little further. That's illogical still, I think. But what's completely insane is when it goes outside of the country as though these other countries are going to have any type of influence or any type of uh, ability to cause change or reformation in our domestic United States justice system. In, in, in a, in, on a federal level, on a state level, on a city level, that's where it becomes pretty obvious that this is now a far more reaching, organized, professional protesting movement. Whether it's millionaires and billionaires or whomever uh, uh, trying to uh, catalyze this for their own gain, for their own political agenda, for their own news uh, time to get out on the news and, and make it seem like this is just the world burning down and be all because of here's the, uh, <laughs> here's the, 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 uh, insinuated or referred bad guy. It's all president Trump's fault, right? All of this lies on president Trump because he was in office when, as I said, I remember Rodney King, the Rodney King beating, right? He was in office way back then when that happened. He was in office when all those other things happened during the Obama administration. But the whole world, or the perception trying to be put out there, is that he's so responsible for these things that 
things need to change. He needs to be defeated for re-election. Interestingly, on a little side note here, personal, I was with my family up in uh, Santa Barbara. And we were visiting, uh, going up and down uh, the, the main state street there. And there was this uh, ice cream shop. And they had dairy, fresh dairy. It was part of their, their you know, unique uh, ice cream that they made. Outside of the ice cream shop were these protesters. Protesters. And I'll put that in heavy quotes, protesters. They were protesting animal cruelty. But they were undoubtedly paid professional protesters. I say that for two main obvious reasons, at least in my perception. One, they were protesting animal cruelty by having TV screens, portable TV screens over their necks that was that, that were showing how inhumane cows were slaughtered. They were showing clips of how they, they go into the slaughtering rooms and they do these really inhumane tactics of uh, uh, either electrocuting them or shooting them, or I forgot what it was. It was just a, a, over the top. And saying, we don't, we're don't we protesting this shot because uh, uh, the, 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 the treatment of animals is inhumane and you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't, you know, uh, you shouldn't go and, and give business to this establishment because your dollars help go to contribute to this type of inhumane treatment of animals. Now, my wife, who grew up on a farm, but even if you didn't, this is just pretty common sense, but she grew up on a farm. Her first comment was, what are they talking about? The last thing this place wants to do is fund any type of ranch that slaughters cows or animals. This is a dairy establishment. They're getting milk from cows. It's ridiculous that you would try and tie any type of slaughtering of animals to an ice cream shop that depends on milk from cows. No, no ranch that they're getting their milk from is using that milk from cows that they slaughter. Right again, the 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 the, 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 the craziness, right? So they're showing videos of cows being slaughtered when those cows are not the ones who are contributing to that business's uh, uh, inventory and product. Okay, now obviously I'm not going to hash that out. You talk to them long enough, they're going to try and make some type of tie directly to that. But just on 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 first appearances, it's a ridiculous argument that that they're trying to make just in their actual presentation. The second thing is. Where did they get those TV screens? Three, four people having these TV screens. I mean, they, were, they weren't inexpensive, inexpe inexpensive monitors, right? So they have to have somebody funding them because they're not just getting the donations that maybe somebody throws in their little can for 50 cents, a dollar, five dollars, and then turning around and, and investing that into three, four monitors to go out and post a dairy ice cream shop. Somebody with deeper pockets is funding them to do that. So when you start looking behind the scenes and start pulling up the, the curtain from behind the uh, Wizard of Oz, you start to see that there is a very real, not a conspiracy theory or paranoia uh, uh, of, of these types of people. There's a very real, well-funded protest culture and industry. People with deep pockets who are willing to pay a few hundred or a few thousand and uh, to, uh, a few hundred or a few thousand dollars to people who will make this their career. If not part time to supplement, a full time outright salary with benefits career to just go out there and stir this chaos. Now, understanding groupthink and basic psychology, these people realize it only takes that, that seed, that spore of a group of peace, small, a small group of people to then go out and encourage and motivate others. You fuel that fire. It gets bigger and bigger. They start uh, saying things that 
if you think about it, don't make sense. As I said, the, the whole analogy with the cow, the slaughter cows with the milk cows, it doesn't really make sense. But yet some people who don't think beyond a, a certain point will say, yeah, you're right. You know what? You're right. I agree with you. They go to their friends, their friends, their friends, family. And then before you know it, you have all of the, uh, a lot of big cities in the United States burning down. When you go across the world, why are they doing that? Now, as I said at the outset, stipulated. I don't think it was a justified uh, killing. I don't think the, the police officer was, was in the right. Obviously, I applaud his arrest, his charges, made the, the system help itself get through this. But how does that then justify all of the mass looting and fires and, 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 and multiple places outside of where it happened? But obviously, why is that something that would cause other places around the world to start doing it? If not for deep pocket organizers who are causing this to happen for their own gain, for their own publicity, for their own agenda, in part or in whole, to blame it just on Trump to help get his uh, re-election uh, uh, voided out or stopped. I'm trying to regain my composure here, folks. Now, I have always been a big proponent to say all is in God's hands and my faith is in him. And I don't live by the whims of a secular government or secular rule, but I think these are important things to consider, obviously. On a lighter note, NASA did send up two more astronauts up into space, into the uh, uh, International Space Station. So hopefully, by this time next year, we'll have hoverboards, uh, flying cars. Um, let's see, what else are we supposed to have by this time next year because of this launch? Oh, oh we're supposed to colonize Mars by this time next year as well. Um, let's see. Uh, we're going to finally get that uh, uh, instant food maker that you pop in in a little machine and it pops it out in two or three seconds to uh, cook you a dinner. Um, but yeah, I think this most recent launch is going to help provide uh, a lot more technology available to us. I'm going to wrap it up here. I'm just so infuriated that I'll just keep rambling on about this. But let me know what you guys think. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Check out our website, conservativescorner.com, conservativescorner.com. There's some new articles up there. Um, and uh, leave a comment. Send me an email. Shoot me some type of message. We're still do, planning on doing some more uh, recipes in the near future. So please keep sending those in and just trying to organize that out. But uh, God bless everybody out there. Stay safe as we reopen the, the country different businesses going out there. Stay safe. Please don't be so overly paranoid, but pr proceed with caution. Um, God bless you guys. God bless America. Conservativescorner.com. Conservativescorner.com. Thanks for joining us once again. And we hope you'll invite your friends and family to join us in our efforts to champion conservatism for generations to come.